G'day, Glav here and welcome back. Please remember, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. This tour of Thailand was a three-dayer, two-night tour covering about 1,060 kilometres for me. We spent the first night down in the south in Hua Hin, which was the first time for me that I'd been in that town, and then the second night in our old favourite Kanchanaburi. Home from there. So day one sees me leave home at about 4.30am to meet my mate Cole. Unfortunately, it's raining and dark, so our progress to Bangkok was not great, and we hit the bridge over the river in Bangkok about 715 and of course traffic is just horrid by that time. I just hate that Bangkok traffic. I gotta tell you, pushing these big wide bikes through the Bangkok traffic is a pain in the ass. They're wide and the bikes get hot and I just couldn't wait to get out of it. So after we cleared the southern side of the bridge in Bangkok, uh, we ended up pulling up at uh, a McCafe for breakfast. After that, we headed south down the fore, and which is a pretty boring old ride. So at the first opportunity, uh, left hand turn Clyde and out to the coast we went which is a far more interesting ride. So as we come up and over this fairly tall bridge here which goes over the top and in over an inlet from the ocean you'll see that we're going to stop at the 7-Eleven down at the other side just to grab a uh, water. As we pull up, they call this uh, monkey inlet. Have a look at the monkeys everywhere. Um, a Thai lady was kind enough to say to us, hey, don't leave your helmets on the bike because the monkeys will take everything. <laughs> When you travel in Thailand, you hit many roadblocks. This is a typical good experience with the Thai police, but wait for the next one. The last time we came down this road and travelled through this salt field area, you remember on the video I showed you them scraping up the salt by hand and then carrying it in little rice pans to a stockpile. Now all these fields are flooded again, so I guess they're waiting for the evaporation to occur. Well, we're about an hour, hour and a half outside of Wahind and we're just begging for a coffee and found this really interesting little coffee house. Just wanted to show you some of the decorations. Well, here we are coming in from the north into Wahin and yet another police roadblock. This one wasn't quite so pleasant. Uh, we got pulled up, asked for our licenses, which is all fair enough, of course. They checked our licenses and once they determined they were all in order, they decided, or this particular one officer decided, that he was going to book us a thousand baht each for having excessively noisy bikes, which just isn't the case. Uh, fortunately, my mate speaks Thai and kept arguing with him and saying no, 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 until another more senior officer came over, heard what was going on, told the other officer that if the bikes were quite acceptable and they were like that and we could be on our way. So off we went.
Just thought I'd give you a peek of my room in the Assisa Hotel in downtown Wahin. Only a couple of minutes from the beach um, and right in the heart of things. Uh, 900 baht for this room, uh, just fantastic. 40 odd dollars uh, for my Aussie mates and what a great spot to stay. Really pleasant. Here we are wandering downtown Wahin towards the beach, which is only a five minute walk away. The first thing that strikes you about Wahin is just how clean the place is. There's no rubbish in the streets, nothing. And that's the quite the contrary to many other places in Thailand, uh, where that looks great in the photos, but in actuality, there's rubbish and crap lying everywhere. This was surprising and really nice. So here we are coming up to the grounds of the Sintara Hotel, which is located right on Wahin Beach. Um, this is a beautiful piece of architecture, colonial in style. But you can walk right through here, right to the beach, which we did. This is Wahin Beach. The first thing you actually notice is it is pristine, just like the photos. My mate knew that a couple of kilometres down Wahin Beach was a couple of nice beach bars. So we decided to finally get a bit of exercise and, and go for a wander down the beach for a few k's where we found this nice little beach bar to stop and have a few beverages at. Very pleasant. And then, of course, a couple of k's back. How cool is this? The lady that owns the Assisa Hotel allowed us to park our bikes right in the hotel foyer. Just a shame they're in front of the fire exit, so I'm glad nothing actually happened. On our way from Wahin to Kanchanaburi, typically another police roadblock, but as usual, a pleasant one. No hassles here. So we followed the four up from Wahin uh, towards Kanchanaburi, but as soon as we got the chance, we got off, and it was a right turn, Clyde, this time, onto some back roads which were really lovely and luscious and green um, as compared to the highway. Some nearly nice roads through here all in good nick which made easy riding and eventually we crossed the River Kwai um, heading uh, for the actual War Memorial and Cemetery. Here we are at the Kanchanaburi War Museum and Memorial and also the cemetery. This is a very sad and sombre place. It's where we've laid to rest our brave and fallen soldiers from Australia, England and the Netherlands who worked on the death railway. Across the road here is uh, the museum. They moved a lot of the artefacts up or down, I should say, from Hellfire Pass to this museum. So if you want to see everything in relation to the Death Railway, you've really got to visit this museum and also Hellfire Pass. Sad thing about this, ask 20, any 20 year old Aussie kid about this, wouldn't have a clue. So this is the Sky Resort at Kanchanaburi. It's located right on the river here and has some really nice facilities. Just thought I'd mention it, 700 baht for the night. So to Aussie friends, that's 30 bucks. Really big, spacious rooms, clean and tidy, all you need, big pool, great place to stay and great value. That's the River Kwai right there in front of us. So here we are on our way home from Kanchanaburi. Uh, a lot of people just head back through Bangkok, but as you saw earlier in the video, I just hate going anywhere near the place. So we generally elect to go across the top to Saraburi 
and then down through Nak on Naok and eventually on to the 331 and back, back south home from there. There's some great nice scenic roads along here, some really good roads, there's nothing uh, too rough at all and it's just nice compared to the other way. Uh, a pretty long ride for me for the day, about 500 kilometres to get home um, and spent most of the day doing it. Uh, but it's only about an hour longer than the other way and well worth it. Well, that's the end of another one from Glav's World. Hope you enjoyed it. Please, folks, remember, life can be very short. So live my motto, live life today. Cheers.